Hello. Good day, everyone. Good day. I was going to say good morning, but I don't know good what time day. people will be watching this. We are super happy to be here after Hello. a long absence. It's only been three and a half weeks. Really? Mm -hmm. Welcome to the Skein Scoop podcast. I am Justine. I am Lori. We are coming from the Skein Yarn Shop in East Greenwich, Rhode Island, and this is episode 48 of our little knitting, crocheting, corner of the world podcast. Um, it is Monday. Woo! After February <laughs> vacation. My kids are at school. I feel like a new woman. And let's talk about the elephant in the room. I dyed my hair. That's the elephant in the room? Yeah. Because I, I, I think everybody's it, thinking, oh, look at that fake blonde. Oh That's my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> or they could be thinking, look at Lori's roots. I've never had my hair dyed. I didn't. I don't know why I didn't. You said that and I was surprised, but I don't know why I would be surprised because you're young. So and you're blonde. So uh, the, the super, super blondness of it. I mean, I, I love it. It reminds me of what my hair is normally like in the summer because I turn blonder in the summer. I always think your hair looks good and blonde. I think I made the assumption that you had always had See highlights. See this like dark color under here? That's brown. That's what my whole head looked like a week ago. Really? Brown. I never think of you as having brown hair. My hairdresser did say not one gray. She didn't see a single gray in my hair. And my dad and I have the same exact hair. He has... He, he always had a red beard. Yeah, he doesn't have gray and, hair. And blonde hair. Um, and his uh, his beard is gray now, but his hair is still blonde. Yeah, when I think of your dad, I don't think of... I, I don't think of him as... Not, not that I think about your dad that often. <laughs> you can. He's great. I wouldn't tell you. Um, <laughs> Unlike some of our customers who are in love with my dad. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> anyway, that got weird. <laughs> <laughs> that escalated quickly. Yeah. Last week was February vacation. The week before that, our house was like riddled with the plague. Yeah. That's why we haven't, we haven't been here for, for those reasons, essentially. Yeah. I, I mean, I've been around. So two weeks ago when we normally would have podcasted, everyone in my family got sick. Very sick. Actually, not everyone. The boys didn't get sick, but... Right. Poor you, Charlotte. Charlotte, and Charlotte was sick on her birthday. I know. She turned four. Um, Which, by the way, still haven't gotten her a gift. Oh my God. Well, you, every single you, morning she wakes up and she goes, It's my birthday. Can I have a present? <laughs> Is this for me? Um, <laughs> yeah. She's crazy. We got her um, a big girl bed. Yeah. Which she fell out of last night. Oh, I remember those days. I was downstairs in the living room happily knitting and watching love is blind you're watching the new season mm -hmm. i can't i, I can't i reached my limit with that I show love it so much um yeah i'm watching love is blind and all of a sudden i hear dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and i'm like oh shoot <laughs> then you gotta wait in here if threw, there's crying oh she screamed i oh. threw my knitting and ran upstairs my um, kids would fall out of bed and but would end up staying on the floor she definitely i mean there's i put a pillow on the floor and uh there was a she, didn't a, put her she back has in a the rug bed. well i do i mean i mean like when i go to bed when i put her to bed i put the, an extra pillow on the floor just in case oh she did okay off. because i'm gonna get one of those things but i really don't want to because they make it really hard to uh make the bed i don't think you should get one of those things you not that so. you asked me no i don't want to so don't. If you okay great i'm not going to my brother-in-law no, was like you ridiculous. need to get one of those things no that's stupid <laughs> jay that's stupid What's funny is that he said that and my 13-year-old nephew goes, I wish I had one. My bed's real high. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she got her new bed and uh, that's that was the highlight of, of my February vacation. <laughs> and we babysat a puppy. Right. Which has become responsible for your back hurting you. Because... Yeah, my back is back to being a little not great. So we've got all kinds of ailments happening. My hip is killing me. I feel really old. Yeah. Oh. I, I, I meant like Danny too. I, I thought old. you meant like, yeah, you're old. No. 
um, yes, I am experiencing pain that I have never, I mean, I've, you know, You've I've never had, had back, hip pain? I have never had hip pain. And that's lucky. And uh, I've had plenty of back pain, but riveting content. <laughs> all of our, all of our ailments. Mm. Um, this coffee tastes so good. I know it, it must because you never get it anymore because you make your own. So good. Um, my ice me my ice machine isn't working again in my freezer. Oh, hate that. Me too. You know what I really hate. See, pet, pet see, peeves. pet peeves. Lori and I were talking that we should have a segment called pet peeves. Let's do it now really yeah. quickly. Okay. Something that I hate. Tell me. Well, I have a, like a million things in my head right now, but one thing that I really, really hate is having to figure out what's for dinner and like plan all the dinners. Mm -hmm. And then I really hate it when the kids are all home over the break and you have to feed them for all the meals. <laughs> like no lunch is happening at school. So I have to make oh, sure right, there's right, food. Right. And then they leave their bowls all over the place. And then they leave their like silverware in the sink. Put it in the dishwasher. I hate that. What's your pet peeve, Lord? So your pet peeve is essentially children. <laughs> and my husband. <laughs> Let's see, my huge pet peeve this morning was um, the workmen that were anybody who comes to your house who parks so that you can't get so that you can't leave the house that's my yes. big pet peeve uh we have a our garage like you have to kind of swing a little to get into the door yep and same so, with mine my sister knows not to pull up all the way but some people will park on the right and then i can't and i have to do like a 19 point turn to get my van into the but into why the garage. would i'm like come on park on the street so when i go to your house i pull up because i know if <laughs> When you what? come to my house, you block everybody. You, how many times has Michael had to park on the street because you? He has. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. All right, I will never do that again. Uh, I, I didn't so, know that. I, I think it's great. I I'm, love the I'm fact that that's it. my pet peeve, and I do it in your house <laughs> because she, I hate it. She pulls straight up and then diagonal, so nobody can get around. Because <laughs> usually it's like you're gonna just stop by. And I then think. You end up I feel like along. yeah, yeah. Yeah, we end up talking. We have a lot to talk about. All right, I'm never gonna do that again. I hope she, I hope you do. I'm not going to because I hate it. I was ready. I was literally she was like ready I to hate people today. Everybody, because I, like, I was like trying to get here. But all and she had was like in my mind. I was. She's like, I'm gonna kill people today, and I was like, Is it me? <laughs> I know. I almost put not you. <laughs> oh, you should have because I was a little concerned. Well, you should just know. It's not me. It's never you. It's because it is never you. You're the person I'm venting to. That's great. And um, oh that's God. just a given. But so <laughs> I don't know if I've mentioned this before. People in the shop, people who are here on a regular basis know that my, you know, you guys all know that I moved last July. But the master bath was <laughs> it just, I, I, I'm going to send Justine a picture so you can see what it was like the bathtub was inserted into the floor so that the floor was here and the bathtub was here underneath the floor correct so it was like Tripping having a hazard. little it was like having your a little pool yeah, in thought, your bathroom you should you should have filled it with balls it would have been a cool ball pool. we had all kinds of you jello. Know, suggestions yes jello was one of them and ball pit was one of them and actually, I really, Kevin threatened to make it a koi pond. Oh, God. <laughs> Which, frankly, I thought was really funny. <laughs> and he, he, and he went so far as to, he didn't buy real koi, but he bought like these mechanical koi that would, I swear, these showed up at the house. And I really thought he was going to do it, oh. but he never did. Well, I'll take those if those are tubby toys. My kids would love them. Uh, all right. I'll try to remember to ask him. So, so that so never you make happened. Fish, little plastic fish things that when you put in the water, they. Swim. Yeah, I feel like that's what they were. Yeah. And. That um, Kevin, he's so fun. Yeah, he's and then you'll have to put. Grandpa. And then he is going to be a very fun grandpa. That's a whole other story. Um, then you'll have to put in the picture that. Yeah. Other Kevin, <laughs> Kevin from Needles at the Ready sent. Yeah. Um, 
And so finally construction has started on the bath on the bathroom. And that's where this whole thing started because there are there are people working at the house and when I went to Parking leave behind your car. every single time. So every sub that comes to the house parks behind my car. Is your car in the driveway? No, it's I mean in the garage. It's right? in the garage. It's it's in the garage. I hate people. But it's like so <laughs> there are three garage doors and because it's because because if you've been following the podcast, you it's a massive garage. The garage is as big as the footprint of the house. No lie. And that's that's why a person to remain nameless wanted the house. And Not it you. is a very large garage. But it's it's as though Every time someone comes to the house, they're guessing. It's like they're rolling the dice about like where they should park. Right. And they always park all the way to the left. I don't know why they would think that no one would be parked there because it's the spot that's closest to the house. Do you uh, know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like why? I would think you would guess the spot that's like furthest away from the house. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? People. Don't park behind other people's cars. Yeah. Talk, about, like, talk about a first world problem. I know, for real. <laughs> That's your biggest pet peeve? That's my pet peeve for today. Okay. <laughs> but I'm going to start making a list. And pet peeves is going to be a regular segment. <laughs> so we can just sit here and bitch about things to you people. Since you some for some reason like to listen to us talk. Yes. Um, yeah, that being said, we had a lot of, of people that watched our latest episode. Yes. Episode 47. We are approaching episode 50. I think we should do something special on episode 50. What do you think we should do? I don't know. I don't know. I just threw that right out there. I think we should. Thinking. Maybe we should do a giveaway. Yeah, we could do a we giveaway. Could. Or we could do like... I don't know. Do you guys have a, any interest in doing a knit-along? Or... I mean, we're, we are going to talk about something that we are all making in a minute. Yep. Um, but yeah, let's talk about our knitting and what we're wearing and all those things. And then we can go into all the stuff that's happening at the shop. And do we want to talk about, or I guess we could save it till the end. What? Like, I don't know, other stuff that happened during our absence. Nothing major, but other stuff we did. You were sick. Yeah, I missed the trunk show with our friends. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we definitely want to talk about the trunk show. Let's talk about the trunk show now okay. because it was so good. It was and so good. So we had a trunk show, not this, not this past weekend, the weekend before, the 17th and 18th mm -hmm. with Hope and Keisha. Hope from Hope, Hope Made Yarn Co. and Keisha from Simply Vintage Designs. I meant to put on the earrings today. And... Um, that was so rude. <laughs> Wake up. And yeah, and we didn't even get a chance to, we talked about it a little bit on the podcast before, but like, I think we thought we were going to have more of an opportunity to promote it. Do you know what's crazy is Tell I me. keep thinking like anytime we have these people that are coming, I'm always like, oh, we should do like a, a group podcast, like with everybody. We should. And then the time goes like that. And it's I over. know. Well, we've toyed with the idea of doing something with Kevin and Ray, and hopefully that's going to happen mm -hmm. at, at some point. You know, we've 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 thrown it around. Yeah, it's hard. How do we how do we fit everybody? We just move back. I don't know. We have so, to make it work. We sit on laps. Yeah. Or there's just, a they there's a picture. <laughs> they can sit on my lap. <laughs> So anyway, the <laughs> Kevin and Ray are dying right now. <laughs> so it was just thank you to everybody who came to the trunk show. It was, you know, thank you to everybody who called and and said they wanted to shop the trunk show and it was fantastic. I think I think um Keisha and Hope were really really happy with the turnout and that makes me so happy because the setup was lovely it was it was really lovely hope, hope yeah she she really both of them hope has her it's like they're at a it's like they're at a festival right 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 she has that like not slat those, wall that looks like slat wall those kind of that's like the wire grid, the grid. grids yeah 
yeah, so it was it was fantastic. The only thing that did worry me, but thank goodness only one person did at the beginning was trip over like the feet. Oh. That's the only thing you need to be careful of. Right. But but then I think we were all kind of like, I was looking at everybody's feet the whole two days, you know, <laughs> and I was constantly telling everybody not to trip. Um, but oh. the Hope's yarn, as we knew from Wool and Folk was, is, is amazing. Yeah. And uh, we're all knitting with it now. And um, so so if you want to shop Hope's Yarn, it's Hope, Hope Made, Made Yarn, yarn Co. Co. And she's on Instagram, so you can find her there. And I'm sure there's a link in the bio. And Keisha is simply Vintage Designs. And Keisha had so many new things. Yeah. I got... Um, yep. I got new earrings. I think you got them. I did. You got, I got the long rectangles when we were at Will and Folk, right? I did. I did. Yeah, so I got the long rectangles, but then I also got... Um, I got posts Progress this time. keepers. And they ha she had progress keepers that were double-sided. Yeah. Those were so beautiful. Oh, wait. You know what? I think I might... I feel like mine are over here. Ow. Ow. Oh, she really is like an old lady. Um, wait, is yours not on the table right here, Lori? With this stuff? Uh oh. Um, Charlotte pulled them, pulled out my progress keepers. They were on the table, and she was like, "Oh, my! These are so pretty earrings, Mom. <laughs> I like your earrings. <laughs> these are so great." Here, my arms are long. Okay. So they're double sided. Yeah. So that's a progress keeper. Oh my gosh! Look, Look at how, how gorgeous. And so. I got the do, Tony, do I got this the same one too. Picture. So this is one that you slide on, but so you guys can't appreciate how well. I shouldn't say that you can't, but I don't think you can because we're shaking and everything. But oh, I can't. I can't. Keisha is a photographer, and she takes all these beautiful photos of nature, and then she miniaturizes them and puts them in the jewelry with resin. Why are you looking like that? Because <laughs> the way you say miniaturizing oh my God. <laughs> listen i want to be emphatic miniaturize you're in my space <laughs> usually you're yelling at me to scooch closer i know i did we we started off like this because <laughs> we've missed each other oh i'm just so happy to feel so healthy and not sick that's so nice i don't feel healthy but <laughs> um so the trunk show was fantastic. I highly recommend that you check out their Whoa. stuff. Make yep. sure you're following them on Instagram for sure. Make sure you're following them on and Instagram. And watching their podcast, the Pine Barren Knits podcast on YouTube. Uh, they were sitting at the table during the trunk show. So on Saturday, I couldn't get over here. I was not well. Yeah. And then on the Sunday, I woke up and I just all of a sudden felt better. And I came over on Sunday um, and they were sitting at the table and I was like, I'm just going to get two skeins of yarn and that's all I'm going to get. And then I saw Hope's swatch and I went, what is What's this? <laughs> These colors are really good. What are you making? <laughs> and she told me and we'll talk about it in a little bit. Teaser. Um, and I picked out my yarn to make the same thing because she was like, oh, Keisha's making it too, and Lori's making it too, and That's nine right. other people picked up the thing that, and I was like, you okay. Can't. Yeah, that kind I of FOMO. I gotta go over. Nope. Guess I gotta go over. All right. Let's so, talk about what we're wearing and all the knitting, yeah? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. I'm go. wearing my sheep camp. This is my sheep camp by the Native Knitter in Beachy Breeze Fibers, which is now Clockwork Fiber Company in her Delta Worsted base, which is non-superwash, and it is so warm and soft, and I love it. And over the vacation, I ripped out my old closet, and I put in a new closet. Yes, you did. And because I did that, my knits are now neatly folded and in little baskets that make me so happy. And so this morning I sat there and I was like, hello, sheep camp, come out of that little drawer. And that's what happened. My knits were on the floor in my closet. Oh. Like a giant stack of knitted things were just on the floor, which is gross. So I decided not to do that. My knits are not on the floor. My knits, not that I don't have nearly the number of knits because before, before owning the shop, 
I, this, I gotta turn this on silent, I can't take it. Um, before owning the shop, everything I made, I made for other people. A theater mode, right? Yeah. So I always, not always, I mean, but, but I mostly made things for other people. So I really didn't make that much stuff for myself. So I don't yeah. have the number of knits that you have, but my knits are either strewn around my room or, or folded in my closet and on shelves. Uh, my friend's husband, Josh, who was helping us like put things together. And he was like, why do you need these like baskets? I got these baskets that go on the wall. Yeah. He's like, what do you need? What are you going to put in those? And I was like, my knits and he, and, or I said my yarn stuff. And he, he was like, you have a big cabinet downstairs. And I was like, not for my actual yarn, oh, gosh. <laughs> like for the things that I've knitted. And he was like, oh, oh you make things <laughs> anyway. All right. Well, I am wearing, isn't this lovely? Talk about your green thing crochet. first. You think I should? Just really quickly, because we already talked about it. Just really quickly. Oh, so all right. Now so go. my sweater is the Weekender by Andrea Mowry. Um, this is several years old, but I love it. And it's made out of Harrisville Highland. And uh, it's worsted, right? It is worsted. Great. Yes. But there is a Weekender light that can be done in fingering. Yeah. And you could make this out of so many options of things that we have in the shop. It would That's be fantastic right. in ultra alpaca. That's it would be I fantastic think. in ultra alpaca. It would also be good in Lanus. It would be it would be good in Rios. Yeah. All the things. All the things. So I really do love it. And I really enjoyed making it. And there's tubular cast on and bind off, which you can do or not do. I think you should my vote is yes, you do it because I feel like Listen, it's not that hard. Okay. There are different ways of doing the tubular cast on that I think people don't know about. I don't um, have a hard time with the cast on. I have a hard time with bind off. Oh, I love I love a sewn bind off. Yeah. Love it. I'm impatient. You don't say. <laughs> All right, so that's my sweater and I love it. I love this detail. Yeah. Look at it. Look at how good that is. It really does look like a very store bought sweater. So I mean this that is the Well, thank you. Obviously. This is a three needle bind off. Yeah. And I love a three needle bind off. I love it, love it, love it. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, now All right. you can tell them what's on your neck. This is crocheted, <laughs> which means I did not make it because <clears throat> even though I even though I claimed to be a crocheter a couple of months ago, I really am not because it hurts my hands. So um this is wild oleander. Justine, it's down here. Wild Oleander Hooded Scarf, okay? And all the links are below in the show notes. So let me show you this. I wish, maybe you can talk about the crochet because you're a crocheter, but no, I don't know how to do Annie that. made this, our friend Annie, who now works at the shop, made this. I'm it so is sorry. so beautiful and it's made out of Noro Tsubame which is T is in Tom, S is in Sam, A, B, A, M, E, Tsubame. And it's beautifully soft. I know when you think Noro, you don't think soft, but you would be wrong. It's really soft. It's so soft. It's worsted weight. Annie said this was really fun to make because, well, it flew off her hook. I think she made it in two days. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a fast Look one. at how gorgeous it is. Yeah. And it's, it's really pretty. I one thing that I like about it, and you said the same thing, is that it's it's not choking you. So I love the look of a triangular shawl, right, with the points in the front. And a lot of times when you do those things, it can sometimes be either like too bulky on the back of your neck, or it doesn't hang right so that the triangle hangs. You you're like constantly adjusting. With this, well, it's just not a crazy a amount bit. on the back of your neck. And it's not tight on your around your throat. So if you're gonna be warm with it, it's gonna keep you warm. Um, but it's not gonna be like overwhelmingly. Yeah, like I am not feeling the need to take this off. And I'm wearing quite a few layers right now. So so that's that. Um, okay. Our friend Laura made this right, move over. Um I I know you I No, know. no, there's the leg of the floor. Oh, right there. oh. that's why. All right. Um good. our friend Laura made this that's for right us. We, we haven't shown us this is <gasps> oh it's so pretty the everyday drk cowl yes also by andrea mowry oh, beautiful so, yeah 
Um, hi, Laura Ross. I just, hit, I just hit myself in the nose. So this is the Everyday DRK, Everyday DRK cowl yes. using Le Garçon Fluff and British DK. DK. Um, Which we are, we have fluff in the shop right now and British DK is coming in very soon, I think, in March sometime. Fantastic. I would say probably the latter half of the month because those guys are away right now. Uh, it's really beautiful. This is, it's got a subtle, like vertical, not vertical. Diagonal. Diagonal um, texture in there that makes it interesting to make. Um, Laura gives a suggestion and she told me this and I did this for my inclination cowl, which has a similar shape. When you're seaming up the back, when you seam up the back, leave about an inch that you don't seam together. It just allows for a little bit more room around the back of your neck. The more you know. So pretty. Thank you, Laura. Lovely. Okay, I have a finished object. What is it? Because I won, <laughs> okay? I finished my cozy comfort throw. And when you see where my... Your hair is on. When you see Four where Charlotte's. my progress keeper is from last episode, you're gonna be amazed. I'm gonna be shook. Okay. You sound so hip. This is where my progress was from the last time we podcasted. Oh my god, it. so only because I was in a competition, all right? I do not like to lose. Yeah, you wouldn't have finished it otherwise. Not not so soon. <gasps> I can't wait it's until done. mine is done. It's so good. Charlotte thinks it's for her. It's not. Um, yes, so this is the Cozy Comfort Throw by Molly of a Homespun House. And <clears throat> it is knit using yarn from Emma's Yarn from the Small A Day set from 2023, plus these five colors here at the end which if I'm being honest, I wish I did them in a different order, but I'm okay. I don't love the transition, uh, but I wanted to end with the light purple. I don't know, well, I'm, I'm fine with it. I don't really care, it's over. I got to the point with the last five colors that I was like, I hate this blanket. <clears throat> Except now you love it. I love it. Cause you're I not did a little bit of work math. on it. I did for each color, I did 18 rows and 220 stitches. That is 124,300 stitches. That's how many stitches are in this Wow. Blanket. It is huge. It is um, 30 mini skeins. Mm. Uh, oh, that's what I had to do. 18, 18 rows times 30 mini skeins times 220 equals 124,300. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to the mini skeins, I held Barocco Vintage Sock in the color Mochi uh, white um, throughout the whole thing. And that's what makes it DK weight. It is squishy and it is heavy and it's it is warm fantastic. and it is lovely. Um, we cast on with an I-cord. I did a cast on on either side, I mean not a cast on, I did an I-cord on either side, and then I bound off with an I-cord, um, and I'm done. I did tell text Judy, and I said, <clears throat> listen. You texted you, both of us. Would you mind casting on all the same things that I'm already currently knitting on so that I could have a competition? And she was like, you're sick, no. That's what she, she said, never again. Never again. <laughs> <clears throat> that poor woman did not want to be in a competition with me. I made it a competition. Yes, but it's, so it's funny. But it motivated both of us because I think she's done now too. Oh, that wouldn't surprise me. But was his, what was hysterical about it is that she says she's not competitive, but then she was stomping her foot. And she, <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, I just love her so much. I'm so grateful um, to be done. And I mean, less than three three months from when I started. Oh my gosh. I started December 1st. Less than two months. No. Oh, 
all of December. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. I can't. Um, wow. That that went by fast. Those I fast three months. Yeah, it looks so pretty. It's gorgeous. Look how pretty it is. I know. And someday when I do mine, it'll look like that. I love it. I love it. I love that it's over. Um, as soon as I finished it, I was like, now what am I going to do? Oh, which you've only got me, 17 other things cast on. Which leads me to my next problem. Not a problem. I have a lot of unfinished sweaters. Like, I think I would say seven, but I know that I have more than that. And that is stupid. I don't know if stupid is the right word. I mean, it just Thanks is. For saying that. It's not. It's not stupid. It's just... It just is the life of a knitter, I think. Yeah, I mean... I know some people I only do... I definitely am a process knitter, right? I definitely... I need the act of knitting more than I need... I, I the, the Sometimes even just winding a ball of yarn in the, in the hope of it becoming a pair of socks is enough for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Even if it's not ever worked yeah. on. That's stupid. I do not think it's stupid. Mm -hmm. I don't. Boy, somebody's rocking out outside. No, it's that's that's stupid. That is a pet peeve. That's stupid. That is the stupid music. That sounds like that our stupid landlords <laughs> pump in through. <laughs> Can you tell I love them. Um, oh, there's a speaker right outside yes, the front door. I didn't ever notice that. Yeah. So. There's like a, what would you call that? Is there an awning, I guess, if you will, like outside of, you know, all the shops in this plaza. And they they never pumped music in before, but this is a recent thing, the past mm. couple of months. So and cool. The, it, and the music is horrible. I, I don't even know how to describe it. Actually, it was hysterical. It's like 80s. Because Keisha and Hope arrived and, and, the, and it was like six o'clock in the evening on Friday. You had to, I wish I had video of Keisha dancing to that music. It was <laughs> so funny. Oh, God. It was hysterical. But, but aside from that fun moment, I hate it. Yeah. Because people are constantly saying to me, what's that stupid music? It was loud just now. Yeah, it's awful. <clears throat> so... Um, so my, my dilemma is which thing, which is my next thing that I, that you're going to finish. Yeah. Okay. I, need to, I need to finish project. So I finished this on Saturday morning and then I, I was like not in the right brain space to, um, pull out a sweater. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't, I wasn't in it. Okay. So I pulled out something different. Do you want me to show you? Yes. Okay. Quite a build up. <laughs> I pulled out a scrappy blanket that I haven't worked on in a while. Oh. I pulled out my DK jelly roll blanket. Nice. Um, this one. Okay. So this pattern is written for fingering weight yarn, but I am holding DK, I mean, fingering weight double for a DK version. Mm -hmm. And, um, I had initially had done, I had already two strips done, mm -hmm. but I kind of felt like they weren't long enough. So let me show you what it looks like. So this I is, love it. I love the colors. Isn't that so fun? Yeah. So I ha I was at, I had this be, um, let's see. Yeah. I had this as my last of the of this first row and I was like that's not really long enough so I added all of these colors here mm -hmm. so I don't know if you can really tell but I'm trying to do the first strip is purples and pinks okay and my second one is yeah you can totally blues. tell so it's a it's random but not totally random and then this one I had started um, Peaches and I was like peaches and, and yellows. Yeah. So since I picked this up again, I've done these colors and these, which is fun. Um, it's a really, really fun pattern. I am doing a few changes to it. So I've noticed that a lot of people have been doing this. Um, Kay from the Crazy Sock Lady. No, this she looks so is, good. 
the crazy sock lady k is um doing this and she's the one that kind of inspired me to do the dk version and in the pattern there's some directions for how to get your stitches in the front to have like this kind of visible seam which i think is really pretty yep um i think it's really neat so Kay gives some suggestions on how she does that, how you slip the stitches. And so I, if you look down below in the project pages down below, I copied and pasted exactly what she did because that's what I'm doing. Um, and it's really, really fun. I'm also knitting over my ends on the wrong side so that I just don't have to weave in any ends, which is great. I'm using so many mini skeins and things that makes me really happy. And shockingly, I have more pinks than I have of everything else. So there's going to be a lot of pink in this blanket. Um, Nothing wrong with that. I think it's really, I love it. I think it's really fun. Uh, it certainly keeps, I, I especially love this section that's got three strips already. Mm -hmm. I think it just looks so, I can visualize it being really big and hopefully, you know, hopefully, 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 hopefully it's, you don't think it's not long enough, right? Oh, it's definitely long enough. No, it's, it's perfect. I wouldn't make it any longer right. than that. It's the, the, you guys can't see, but the bottom color is touching my feet. So it's like almost as solid as me. It's so good. I love it. It's fun. I, you know it's what? It's really fun to knit. I'll tell you, like, if you're looking for a scrappy thing and you don't want to do a crocheted thing, this is a really, really fun one. Kevin started one and he's doing it um i believe with his scraps um but he's doing it in fingering weight i i don't think i would want it in fingering weight it's too thin um this is my favorite i color. think it's fantastic like i love colors. especially now like now that you have like three columns together yeah. it's with three strips together i mean i but i get anxiety like not like knowing that I'd have to make the decision on where to start and finish all the little pieces. I don't know, for some reason that gives me anxiety. Oh, I'm knitting, well, okay, so this one, this color I wanted to use, the one that I'm using right now, I don't know what yarn this is. This is from Charlotte's Baby Blanket, but I don't know what yarn this is. Might be... I feel like it could be hedgehog. Like round hedgehog, I'm not, it oh, could be hedgehog. Either one. Um, this is one that I had a lot of, but most of the things that I have are like little minis mm -hmm. um, that people have, have given me. Like this is probably gonna go next, right? This little blue um, or this beautiful teal. Mm. Um, so most of them, I'm just knitting the whole little ball. Oh. Um, all of these are just those little balls. Oh, okay. Um, minis that I might have had scraps that I might have had. So I think there are a majority of each of my sections are like 10 grams. Okay. Uh, Cause I believe that's what those little mini skeins are. But I really wanted to use this color. So I wound oh, that's it. That's fantastic. I wound it up and I'm pulling from the inside and the outside. And I'm just gonna knit this until it goes, you know, halfway up the pink. Yeah. And then I'll probably add more, but like, that part i'm i am truly trying to be like random well it's all yeah i'm like looking and i'm like okay well this blue how will this look next to the strip that's next to it and right I'm, and right. that's the most of what i'm doing um Kay from the crazy sock lady she is being very 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 random so she's using these minis which are from row one i've never I haven't purchased row one minis. People gifted me these. Wow. Jess, Jess and Laura Ross have sent me so many of these little oh, things awesome. and they're awesome. So, and then if I have a mini of my own, I might split it and, and add it in. I think I added this in here somewhere um, or it's going to be in this section coming up. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, yeah, so that's, that's how I'm doing this blanket and it's bringing me a lot of it's like easy but interesting and i it's motivating because you don't have to knit each section for a very long amount of time right so, right so this is like it's I, clear I that just, it's bringing you tons of joy i just sort of was like i need to not pull out one of the sweaters yet because i just don't know which one i want to do because yeah. i did buy the yarn from hope right but in my head i was like justine finish something else first 
That was mean Justine talking to me just now. <laughs> She's such a bitch. <laughs> and then New Yarn. I've never seen that, Justine. And then New Yarn comes into the shop and I'm like. I know. It's, it's very, very hard. Like, we'll talk about it with like some of the new yarns later, but it's, it's, it's really, it's hard. Have you seen, there's like a picture that says, there's a picture that's been going around on Instagram and it's like the outside of yarn store. And then there's like a chalkboard sign out front that says like, there's nothing harder than, you know, if you think your life's hard, try working in a yarn store. Yeah. But it's yeah. like, and so many people have sent that to that's me. That's so funny. <laughs> it's like a constant. It is. Okay. Now I'm warm. Okay. All right. Um, but I that's just because we have the heat up too high, and I'm going to turn it down. Ow. I only have one little thing to share now, so you're up. Okay. All right. I just got to turn this down. I'm just going to limp over to the... I got to shave my sweater. <laughs> shave your sweater? Mm. I really am limping. <laughs> um, okay. So, I'm going to show you... Um, let's see. I'll show you the baby blanket because I haven't shown that in a little while because I have made some progress. Do I you know. have new perfume on? I don't. I, I don't. I barely ever wear perfume because I'm like sensitive to it nowadays. Is it my it lip gloss? good. No. <laughs> you smell good. Huh? But I didn't smell it before because oh, you had the thing it's on. my hair. Oh, yeah, it is your hair. What is that? Oh, it smells so good. Let me smell it again. What is that? It's dry shampoo. Oh, it smells great. Is it bougie dry shampoo? Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> it smells like citrus. That's funny because when I put it on, I feel like it's toxic. Oh, I love it. It smells lovely. Um. Okay, so. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> people, could you imagine? I don't understand Wait, why people I want you us. to take. <laughs> I want you to take the thumbnail of you smelling my lips. <laughs> Please. Please put that as the thumbnail. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. That would be awesome. Justine and Lori changing their relationship. <laughs> uh, so here is my baby blanket. <laughs> I still really Lord, need to get, get going. There is a baby coming soon. But look, there's my progress keeper. So I did make progress. Mm -hmm. I love, I really do love this blanket. It is so easy. This is the Pearl Soho Mosaic Blanket. It is not a baby blanket per se, but that's what I am making the smallest size, which is basically going to be a car seat sized blanket. And I love it. It's very squishy. I'm using Malabrigo Rios in the colors Natural and Fresco Asseco. Definitely looks really hard. I know, and it's so easy. All it is is knit and slip. And I didn't even like, I was, I did not do an I cord up the side. Um, well, there's, this isn't an I cord. It's just a garter stitch border. It literally could not be easier. Row by row instructions. Um, I made, you know, I, I made this you years to, ago for you someone. To, uh... What do I need to? Look, I, I have my progress keeper. Yeah, you need to like. I'll show it again. It's just so pretty. Yeah, and gorgeous. and Rios is the perfect perfect yarn for this. It's just yeah I love because it. both sides are like ridiculously good looking and soft. Yeah, that almost looks like three D on the back side, doesn't it? Look at that, so pretty. But this is definitely the better side, obviously. <laughs> really good. Don't I worry. can't recommend this blanket more more highly. You need to force yourself to put down your computer. And every day, spend at least 20 minutes knitting a few rows on it. That's the only way it's going to get done before yeah. that baby comes. Well, I do. So the baby, let's talk baby for a minute. So the baby is scheduled to come sometime around April 4th. That is, what's today? Today's Monday. That is 26. five and a half weeks from today. How crazy is that? Has this, I'm sorry, but. No, it hasn't gone by fast for me. For me, it has gone by so fast. I feel like it was yesterday that they told us they were pregnant. You know? Yeah. Um, Sam's, I wonder if, oh no. I would love to show a picture of Sam pregnant, but I might get in trouble. Mm, she's so pretty. So, uh, 
which I can totally understand, you know, it's, it, that, that picture was meant for, for us and not for the world because the world is watching our podcast. Um, so she looks so cute. Um, she's probably getting close to being done with this pregnancy. Overall, everything has, you know, everything has gone so well. She's had some problems with her back, which is kind of to be expected. She also has a history of back She has issues. a history of back issues and threw her back out sneezing a couple of weeks ago. So, um, so she's just been taking it really, you know, she's been taking it easy. And, uh, yeah, so it's, 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 it's really exciting. I am going to see my parents a week from today and I am I would say that I'm only going to bring this blanket but that would give me anxiety I have to have at least a sock or something with me I have to have more than one project with me but I will probably exclusively be working on this it will be it will be done it's got to get done it has to get done and I was really worried Debbie I'm talking to you I <laughs> I was really worried. Debbie called me. Debbie is um, Sam's mother-in-law. Um, Debbie called me and um, she actually saw Kevin and Alex because they were out in Colorado skiing. Mm -hmm. And I said to her, I said, Debbie, I really haven't knit much for this baby. And I'm really worried about that. And she said, and I thought for sure she would have knit like a pile of clothes like this. Yeah. And she said, she said, oh, she said, I've only knit a sweater, a hat and some booties. And it made me feel so much better. Because I was thinking that there were going to be too many things. I know. But Maybe I have to make something for the baby. Well. I have actually, I don't, I don't, I, I will not make the baby a blanket. No. No, I do not like. I, I do no. not like making baby blankets. No. However, I have a lot of babies. I have a lot of babies. You have a lot of babies coming. Yeah, not yeah. me personally. Not me personally. No. Um, <laughs> I'm blanking on one of them, but I I was thinking I have three babies to knit for. If I knit for Sam, Charlotte's teacher's pregnant, who I went to high school with, and I thought I could make her something. Mm hmm. There's another baby coming. Who else is pregnant? Don't look at me. Definitely don't look at me. So anyway, so that's the blanket. You want to show your other thing? No, you keep going. I keep going? I don't have much. Um, okay, so <clears throat> I've been working on this probably far too much because the yarn is not here yet. Um, but I bought this at Vogue, uh, this yarn, and I... I'm in love with it. This is from Camellia Fiber Co. Is it reverse garter? I mean, reverse stockinette? Or is that the it's, inside? no, that's the oh. inside. <laughs> I was like, damn. Um, this is, all right, I'm stuck. This is the memory sweater by Sylvia from Camellia Fiber Co. I'm sorry, I'm trying to untangle. Uh, and I am making it in her um surrey silk sorry it's you know you know how that happens uh surrey and silk so it's gorgeous i i so i'm holding i'm holding this double and it's a simple raglan sweater mm -hmm. uh with a crew neck and this is her yak yak dk and so the what are you laughing at um uh, i'll tell you in a minute you can keep talking okay so you know this isn't my forte I, and i'm not laughing at you i'm laughing at something charlotte said about yaks oh okay <laughs> so i'll tell you in a minute so it, it is a very basic raglan but i so what is the difference between like what it, what have what is the thing about the pattern that makes it called the memories sweater oh it's about no i read this did you know the history behind the memory sweater i might have but i forgot um i'm actually really glad it... that this came up because um her, her mother mom yeah okay so the memory sweater is named the memory sweater 
in honor of her mom for mm -hmm. the memories of her and the memories that she lost. Proceeds from this pattern will go to the Alzheimer's Research yes, Foundation. I did know that. Um, but the memory sweater is a very basic. Is it? Good? It's a basic raglan. Raglan, balloon knee sleeves. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna put a picture in. I'll put a picture in. But yeah. Um, I was. Do you want to show the picture? Sure, if you want. I was gonna say. Uh, like, does it have a very, anything special to the structure of it? Other Is there shaping, sort of shaping, anything? No, like I'm not I'm trying to think if there, it's been a while since I started it because I, I had to cast it on right after Vogue. I just had to use the yarn. I'm not even sure if there is short row shaping. It doesn't say. It I don't says think. It's a very beginner. Yes, it's a very beginner friendly sweater, which... I, I don't, I, I, I didn't need it to be a beginner friendly, well, actually, I, it's I like it to be, levels yes, for, I, shop. exactly, um, people get intimidated when, not all people, but a lot of people, when they think about making a sweater, they get intimidated, so I like to have samples that are, not everything, but some things that are beginner friendly yeah and um and so i saw this as that type of sweater the yarn is singing in a sweater like that yeah the yarn is able to be showcased in a totally different way it's beautiful it's just i love it and i love the colors that i picked out and i you know it's hard to show when it's on it's in the round um Before you separate for sleeves yeah, too. yeah yeah you must be close I think I am close, actually. Yeah. I think I'm probably about... An inch or two? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah because I actually count... So you're increasing eight... When, when you do the... You're increasing every other row, as one does in a raglan sweater. And when you're increasing, it's eight stitches every, every other row. And I have 300... I think I have like somewhere around 300 and... 44 stitches and I need to be at 400 so not yeah probably about two inches how do you feel about those needles um I I really like these needles so I'm using um Chowgu Forte 2.0 yes I you know and I was like should I talk about them I I want I think I'll wait to go into a whole review of them because right now we only have one set. So we do have one set of the Chow Goo Forte 2.0 needles. Um I I really love them. The, so the small needles in this second edition set are carbon fiber mm -hmm. and the large needles are black, black wood. wood, African Which black is what wood. My uh, clarinet is made out of. Oh nice. They it's so smooth. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I have to say, I really, I really enjoy working with them. Um, no drag, but different, but they feel the different. Red, regular red cord though, huh? Not the swivel. I like the red cords. I, than the swivel cords. To me, yeah, I like the join of the red cords better than the join of the swivel cords. And so, I found the swivel cord to be good on some things. Yeah. It's it fine. comes, so the new one comes with six swivel cords, which are the silver cords. I, the flexibility, I like the flexibility of the silver cords. And, but I like the join of the red cords better. Excellent. Some people, it, it, it depends on what's more important to you. If the swivel <laughs> is more important, you're going to like the swivel cords better. If the join is more important, you're going to like the red cords. That's my opinion. Agreed. I agree. Um, the... I have to put this, I mean, when, when, when we get this yarn, it takes a while for this yarn to come in. So I wanted to be working on the sweater so it'll be done once we, once yeah. we get the yarn in. I'm obsessed yeah, it's with so this obsessed. yarn. The, um, the memory sweater, so that, uh, I just want to say really quickly, um, for uh, March, I am doing a 200 yes. mile bike ride, not one time, but I'm going to be riding my bike 200 miles um, for the Alzheimer's Association. Um, so I had a question. Alzheimer's has been a terrible 
part of my life. Um, both my grandparents, my dad's parents had Alzheimer's and my dad was diagnosed at 66 with early onset Alzheimer's. And um, it's been really hard and it's been really sad. Um, and for, for a really long time, it's almost like, <clears throat> it's almost like it was sort of secretive. I don't know if that makes sense, but like, yeah. My dad is a very proud person, so it felt, and private and private, and felt like it wasn't something to share or talk about really. Um, but as he, you know, I'm learning more about his diagnosis and the stages of Alzheimer's and um, the medications and stuff that they are coming out with for Alzheimer's. Um, I feel I feel hopeful for the future, sadly not really for my father because he is too sort of advanced in this stage. Um, his doctors think that he is at a like a plateau stage, which I'm grateful for because he could stay there for like five years and be sort of at the same place where he is now, which is, which is good. Um, but so the Alzheimer's Association is a really fantastic organization that does a lot of um, research and trials and um, I feel hopeful for the future so that, God forbid, if, if my sister or I develop any kind of um, symptoms that there, there might not, that our kids won't have to deal with what we're going through. Um, so I am doing an Alzheimer's bike ride uh, in March. And um, yeah, so I got a lot of people that were donating um, mm -hmm. um, from, from my personal account. Uh, and I, I wanted to say thank you because I know that some of the people that we've met through the shop or through podcasting have um, donated. donated. So I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. So are you, so this is, is, is this an actual bike? Like, of course you're biking, but I didn't know if you were doing it on your Peloton. I'm doing it on my Peloton. Okay. That's what do, I wanted to know. I have to, I have to rack up 200 miles in March. Awesome. So that's the plan. So please donate. I think that, I, I I wonder if nowadays, I think you'd be hard pressed to find anyone whose life is not touched by this horrific disease. Yeah, I mean, it feels like for for some reason at this, at this point, it just feels like I'm hearing about it all the time. People who are, are having issues with dementia or um, yeah, just memory issues in general, so. Pretty much any time I find myself stuttering, I'm like, oh my God, this is it. Like I literally, it's something that I think about all the time. Sure. And I, uh, you know, it's devastating. My father was a lawyer. He was one of the most eloquently spoken um, men. And he, in addition to having Alzheimer's, has something called aphasia, which um, alters the way he can express himself. So he basically... It's like being trapped in his brain. He can't get the words out, which is really, really hard. It's really hard. Fortunately, his attitude is pretty fantastic. Um, he doesn't necessarily know. The doctors say that they don't, patients with Alzheimer's at his stage don't know that they have Alzheimer's. So while it, it could be frustrating for him when he can't get the words out, he doesn't really, he usually just brushes it off and moves on to the next thing. Right, he so, doesn't know why. Yeah, right. yeah. So that's that's a positive. I mean, it's harder, obviously, for everybody else around him than it is for him at this point. But it just sucks, regardless. So whatever I can do, I mean, I was thinking about doing a walk, and I was, you know, there's a walk to end Alzheimer's. It's usually in the fall, mm -hmm. um, and I just, I just kept seeing it, and both mine and my dad's birthday is in March, and I was like, you know what? forget it. I have a bike. I can ride 200 miles. I can do this. So, so that's what I'm doing. And, um, I think it's great. Thanks. Hopefully I can get on my bike and do it. <laughs> you to, can definitely do it. I have to do, do some it. rides this week to get a little prepped. <laughs> get my butt ready. For it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I think it's <clears> awesome. <throat> thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so, I, all right. <clears throat> I, I still I you, have one thing. You have, okay. Um, in December, I think I finished a pair of socks for my brother-in-law, and I only did one of the two, so I didn't finish a pair. I just did one. You have a hoe. So I have a hoe. This is yarn from my friend Laura. This is Woolens and Nosh. This is the first Woolens and Nosh sock I've ever knit, and the stitch definition is perfection. 
It is. It is really good. It is so good. So this colorway is called Sun Sunfish. And I cast on. And look at me. I think that's the perfect name, Sunfish. I agree, right? Yeah. Um, I did take this. I had done the cuff and I took this to the movies. Uh, I took the boys to go see Migration. Uh, so I knit you know, four stripes in the movies, which is not very much for me, but the movie is about migrating ducks. And so you can imagine that there was a lot of like flying scenes and the camera or the way that oh. they did, they did it was like diving through things. And I just I like kept turning to Harrison. I'm like, I'm going to vomit. I'm going to puke. <laughs> so literally until, unless they were sitting ducks or standing ducks or like talking at the, you know, I was with my eyes closed or I was going to vomit. Your heel is so perfect. <clears throat> Thank you. I think Samantha Land, um, I don't know, I, and I might have said this on another podcast, but she she just finished a pair of socks for herself and they fit perfectly. And she said they are the, and it was, she took some advice from you and she said they are the first socks that she's ever made that are perfect. Um, I remember, <clears throat> I've talked about this with a bunch of people before. You don't get good at something if you only do it once. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when people, you know, sometimes, sometimes people will be like, I want to try knitting socks. And then they will knit one sock and it does it's not right. And they're like, can't yeah. do it. Never knitting socks I can't socks even again. tell you how many pairs of socks I've knit. Right. And... And when you first started doing it, I'm sure started, they weren't you know, and perfect. The, and even still now, I look at some of them and I'm like, oh, that one, I don't I don't like to wear that sock. It doesn't fit as good as this sock or whatever. Yeah. You know, it's just, you have to like to do it to want to keep trying and getting it right. And so you're well, not going to you make, have to. Yeah. You're not you gonna have to perfect. practice. Yeah. You're not gonna, I, I don't know why people, and, and this goes for just knitting or crocheting in general. Mm-hmm. I don't know why people think they're going to pick up knitting needles and be an expert knitter the the first time they pick up knitting needles. It's like anything, it's a skill. You have yeah. to build it up. Yeah. And I don't can and I don't consider myself I love it. I love it when people come in and they think I'm an expert. Mm -hmm. You know, and I and I and I say right off the bat, I'm like I'm I'm not an expert. I'm yeah. I I'm I'm a knitter. I'm a I'm a halfway decent knitter. I if I can help you Great. Um, You're so modest. No, I'm, like, I'm not. I am an expert. Would you like me to tell you all about how great do I am? Do you trust me? <laughs> <laughs> That's um, my favorite thing to say to people. It's your do favorite you thing me? to do. Yeah. Do you trust me? Um, so I don't even ask sometimes. I actually did that the other the other day. I didn't do it to Caitlin. Who was it? I did it to. I just said we're taking this out and I ripped it off the needles. I want to I want to say one thing about my my little cuff here. Yes. So, you know when you knit an, uh, a knit two purl two in the rib, I mean, in ribbing, and mm -hmm. then uh, it's color changing, and in between the t colors, you would get that line? Yeah. Yep. Um, notice that there is none on no. that? So, um, I do if, notice that. If you flip it on the inside, yeah, you'll see that <gasps> as soon as the color changed. Yeah. So... I would knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, all the way around until I got to the start of the color change. It didn't have to be at the beginning of the row. Okay. At the start of the color change, you knit all the way back to where that start was, one full round of plain knit, and then you knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, until the color changed again. <gasps> and that eliminates that weird reverse, the purl bumps being on the wrong side. That's how you do that. And you can't tell. Um, the crazy, no, you cannot. The crazy sock lady does that. Maddie does that from We Share Needles. So that is um, something I've been doing in my um, self-striping sock yarn. And so I was thinking, I love... It's magic. I love ribbed socks. That's like, amazing. I love um, the look of the leg being fully ribbed. But I hate the look of that. Thing. So I might do an entire sock that way huh. um, in Knit 2 Pearl 2, or I might not. Uh, Laura has sent me so much Woolens and Nosh, and I You're am a lucky just, girl. I am a lucky, lucky, lucky girl. She's my fairy yarn mother, and um, 
Yeah. I'm hoping to get Willens and Nash in the shop. I reached out to Michelle and actually I owe her an email for way too long. Um, um, I know she was going to bulk up her staff and hopefully do some some more wholesaling. I uh, cannot I would... say enough about this yarn. Yeah. It's, it's really nice to work with. The sock, the end result is really good. Uh, yeah. I bought... Yeah, I you, bought a ton of her yarn at Woolen Folk. Woolen Folk yeah. too. You need to remind me to email her. Okay. That's your job. So good, right? Gorgeous. So I think I'm going to get these done and send them out to David because he's deserving of, of that. Yep. Okay. He's a lucky guy. He is a lucky guy. All right. All right. What's so the last thing that I have it is... I'm excited about, but won't really be exciting for the viewers because I had to cast it on. This um, is from Hope. From Hope, yep. So this is Hope Made Yarn Co. I'm really sorry. Is this a 50 gram and 50 gram? There are about. Oh, yes. Oh, it's yeah. the same color. Okay. Yeah, it's the same color. Why not just pull from the inside and the outside? I don't know. I just, I don't like to do that. Okay. Just for her. It's just a thing. Not that there's any, um, yeah, whatever. Anyway, so, um, so the thing that the girls were making that then everybody was like, whoop, jumped on the bandwagon is the Le Pouf by Hedgehog Fibers. And, and there's a Le Pouf cardigan and there's a Le Pouf pullover. Yep. And I think I'm going to do the pullover. Because of the seven, eight, nine, ten sweaters that I have going right now, I have a lot of cardigans. Oh, okay. I labored over that point actually, um, because I think the I think I saw the pullover first, you know, I, at least a year ago, if if not more, and I was and I fell in love with it, and you know, like put it in my queue. Mm. Um, those guys are doing the cardigan. Hope and Keisha are both doing the cardigan. And, um, Hope actually, for Keisha's birthday, she dyes her her own custom color every year, which is so cute. But I have to say, the, so Keisha and I both love green. Mm. And I, I, I don't know, I might ask, I don't know, I might ask Keisha's permission to see if, Hope would dye me a, at least one skein of that of, of her custom color because it's stunning. It's the green. Um, so anyway, this is um, Hope's favorite. That's the name of this base. And, and that's the cashmere, right? This is this is the MCN. And so it's merino um, cashmere nylon. It's recycled nylon. I have never felt anything like this. Yeah. It is stupid. Mm -hmm. This is stupidly soft. And I'm holding it that we're hold you know, we're holding it double um for the lapoof. And it is did you feel did it? Did you have an issue with your gauge? Did I have an issue with my gauge? Not a huge issue. Um I think I'm down a needle size. Okay. I think it's supposed to be on a I think it's supposed to be on a seven. I think that's what it calls for. And I, I'm on a six, yeah. which lately for, I mean, recently I have been knitting incredibly loosely, which I find weird. And I've um, been knitting really tightly. Yeah. And, and so for a lot of projects, I've been going down not one, but two needle sizes. Yeah. But I, I only went down one needle size for this. So, I mean, not that it matters, it's, you know, as long as you get the gauge you need to get. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm gonna show this, but I mean, you can barely see it because I've only done about an inch. You have all your colors here? I do have all my colors here so I can show them. And everybody keeps, uh, of course, me being me, my colors are, my my yarn is on the table. That's just what I do. And uh, everybody's like, is that left over? Can I buy that? And I'm like, nope. You should um, take it off the table. Yeah, I think I just like taunting people. Oh, there it is. Remember? White oleander. See, I told you it was on the table. <laughs> on a post-it. Um, 
I hate my stitches. <laughs> so these are my colors and they're gonna go like this. So it's, so it's gonna be this. No. No, sorry, I'm sorry. sorry. Oh God, sorry. And then the blue, the blue green color. Oh my God, I love it so much. Um, is going to be the band. So I'm doing the cardigan after all said and done. I Are decided you to do. A color? You only need. You're missing a color. Am I missing a color? Yeah. Yeah, because it's six. Maybe. Yes, I do. Yes. This is the second color say. which I wound up. But I did not split into two balls. So. This is the second color. Is that the color that I made your socks out of? Yes. I believe so. Yeah. Review it. Review it. Review it. Review it. Ravioli. Ravioli. So, yep. All right, wait. So, there you go. <laughs> Gorge. It's going to be so good. Um, and so the band that goes, you know, this way and around the bottom and around the cuffs will be this. It's, and I have to give Angie and Jen credit for putting together this fade um, because I don't have the patience, people. So one of your colorways is called yes. Turtle. And so Hope and Keisha were here the weekend right after Charlotte's fourth birthday. And Hope was so kind and she gave Charlotte a little gift, which was this book. Um, which was signed and, you know, it's written so out cute. for Charlotte. It's called I Am Stuck. And the our author wrote um, a little message to Charlotte saying that she was totally awesome. And oh, the book is cute. about this little turtle. Did you read the book? I flipped through it. Oh God, I cannot so cute. claim. So the turtle is, um, it, it, the turtle gets stuck upside down. And all these other animals come over and they are like trying to say like, oh no, you're stuck. Like, can you try this? And the turtle can't get unstuck. And finally this cute little possum comes over and the possum is like, oh, I'm sorry you feel stuck. And then the possum lays on his back or her back and the bo both of them are like laughing together. And you know, the possum is trying to, you know, doesn't just leave the turtle, just yeah, like stays yeah. with, the, with the turtle. And the author, and then they, they, they both end up getting unstuck, and it's great. Um, the author asked, is a Friends of Hope's, and asked her to um, dye yarn for the possum and the turtle. So this one's called yeah. Turtle, and then the other one was called Possum, was gray and like a light, light pink. And Hope used that yarn to knit a little baby hat for Charlotte. Uh, and it is so cute. Yeah, a baby hat. Not a baby hat, a hat for Charlotte and her big <laughs> head. Thank God it fit her. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was really sweet and Charlotte loves the book. So we read it very often. So it was really Make sure nice. you put the picture on. Yeah, I do have a picture of Charlotte reading the book with the hat on. So cute. So cute. I could sit here and do this all day. That's a really wonderful green. Oh, it's so good. That's a good green. It's a really cute book and it talk. it's about like your emotions and how you should, how you can deal when you're feeling for any sort of way. Yep. It's awesome. And yeah, what a great, what a great gift. Yeah, it was so sweet. I think um, the author, Julia Mills, is, I don't know if she's done with her second book and on to her third or, anyway, I think she's doing really well. It's great. And Wicked cute. The pictures are fantastic. I think Julia might have also done Hope's logo, this logo. I think. Pretty sure. Nice. Hopefully that is correct information. Yeah, for real. Hopefully that is factual. Um, so anyway, that is the beginning of my, um, the beginning of my, the very, very beginning of my lapoof, which I really want to knit on, but I'm not going to because I have a baby blanket to finish. <laughs> I purchased yarn to make mm. the same thing. And so that's- And I love those colors. That's going to be mine. That red second from the- Left or right, second, second from the left, next to the purple, dark purple. Yeah, oh, it's kind and of. I think that's an, a one of a kind that red, because you're one of a kind. I love one of a kind. All right, that's all of our knitting. All right, yeah. 
Um, we need we to move have, on because yeah, we still we've have tons go. of stuff to talk about. Oof. No, we don't have to go. Do we? Do you have to go? No, no, I just mean like we got to move on. Oh, we got to move it. Um, okay, so I wrote, walked around the store with the computer and wrote down all the things that are new. So we got into the store. Finally. Finally. Um, the Sunday, double Sunday in tin silk mohair from Sanisgarn. Which, which every time I type in Sanisgarn, it autocorrects to sadness, which is not true. <laughs> so wait, are you saying autocorrect or are you saying autocrack? Autocorrect. Oh, I thought you were saying autocrack. Autocorrect. And I thought it was on purpose. Oh, no. It autocracks. Auto and I thought it was really funny. Oh, no. Autocorrects. Oh, okay. To <laughs> sadness. Because that is funny. It autocracks. It autocracks. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. I'm going to start like using that. that instead. Um, okay, so we have that in the yard in the st store. Um, the the pictures for Sunday Double Sunday are all okay. Up wait. on the website. You're saying Sunday Double Sunday like it's one yarn and it Sunday is not. And Double Sunday. Okay. Are up it's on not the like the U two song Sunday Bloody Sunday. Well, well no, it's not because it's Sunday <laughs> and Double Sunday. <laughs> so the reason Tin Silk Ball hair is not in the computer yet <laughs> because correct. Or crack. crack. Um crack. <laughs> because because Annie was walking around saying Sunday double Sunday. Oh. No, and, I know that they're different. <laughs> and then I couldn't and then I was singing it like the song Sunday Bloody Sunday, except Sunday double Sunday. <laughs> Excellent. No. Lenny, her husband, is having could be done with his knee replacement surgery right now. So hopefully, I hope you have a quick recovery, Lenny. Um, one of the never mind. What? Oh, what you never told us about the thing you were laughing about oh, with the yak. Yeah. Uh, Charlotte has this ABC book, and the the Y is for yo yo, and then you flip up the page, and it says yak, and it has a big picture of a yak. Okay. But, but the picture of the yak is ugly. Like, it's like yeah. not a, a, yaks are not cute. They're not cute. Okay. I mean, or like they could have used a prettier picture, but this particular yak in her book is hideous. hideous. Okay. So she thinks it's yuck. So <laughs> everyone, like it's A is for apple, and then you lift it up, alligator. B is for balloon, ball. Right. When she gets to that one, she goes, Y is for yo-yo, yuck. <laughs> Even though it's yak. She's so funny. She it's an is... ugly yak. Um, I think you should put a picture of it in. Oh, I don't have time for that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, what happened here? Oh, that's just the yak. The... So I was going to be upset. Seriously? I can't. I'm so sorry. <laughs> the yarn from Sandus Garn. I should get. Right? Yeah. You should. I'm gonna chuck it at you. <laughs> awesome. Here. Woo! So athletic. So, so athletic. Oh my god. Still caught it. So this is the Sunday, which is the fingering wheat. 100 percent non-superwash. Okay. These are yarns, in case you didn't know. Uh frequently used by the designer Petite Knit. Um, I'm sure many other designers as well, but that, and, and, and it just so happens that she uses them so much that she has her own palette with, um, for Sunday and Double Sunday. <laughs> I can't, I can't say it without like the song going through my head. So, um, for the Sunday, all the colors I got were the from the petite knit palette and we have one two three four five six seven eight right now we have eight colors in the shop but we have more coming <laughs> what is it like that why like is it like that sorts of big gaps <sighs> was it on purpose yes and no okay um i think i left that gap because i'm because they're coming in and whatever okay. anyway Okay. It shouldn't be like that. You do it. You do you. I was gonna say I, I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to move things if I'm not. If no, no, there's no. a better purpose. No, you. you, you Great. Yeah. Can't wait. Yeah. Okay. Can't wait to come. So we're moving tomorrow. a lot. Of, we're we're moving a lot of stuff around in the shop. So yes. 
All right, so this is 100% merino. Yep, so it's nice and soft. And it's super wash. Not, it's non super wash. It's non super wash. Yeah, it's non super wash. It's gorgeous. Look at this pink, which is great because it's our, I feel like it's our first non super wash fingering, fingering weight. weight that's all wool because, like, the Fino's non super wash, but it's yeah, silk it's and silk. wool. Yeah. Okay, so those are the that's Sunday. Yep, fingering weight double Sunday, DK. So these are um, it's the same base though, right? Yep. Yeah. Look at those. Look at that. So pretty. Yep. Uh, they're fifty gram balls. Um, approximately one hundred and eight meters, so like one hundred fifteen. Yep. Yards. Yep. Gorgeous. Hooray. Gorge. Okay. We also got in some and, new... And we did... I'm sorry to interrupt. Okay. Yeah, and you said the um, tin silk mohair is in. I will have that tagged and up on the computer tomorrow. Yep. And coordinating colors with uh, the petite knit. Um, well, for, for, for both, really. And we'll just keep adding to these because I've wanted them in the shop for a long time and we'll get some samples knit up. Is now a good time to talk about sample knitters? Yeah, sure is, because we need sample knitters, okay? Yep. We need samples. So if you are interested in knitting samples for the shop, please let us know. Uh, please con please email me at lori, L-O-R-I, at stainyarnshop.com. It's in the show notes. Mm -hmm. uh, yep, so thank you very much. Yeah, don't send us an, a message through Instagram for that because it is easy to get lost. Yes. Um, so that would be easier Please if you email. an email. But we um, we are in need of some sample knitters because we just can't do it all. Nope. Um, I remember feeling like, oh my God, I need to do all the samples. Yeah, no. You know? Just can't. Can't do it. Um, we all know that I can't. <laughs> okay. We also got in new yarn from Juniper Moon. This is Juniper Moon Cotton Merino. It is 70% organic cotton it's so and 30% merino wool. Why are it you is because it's so good. It's so it is soft. 212. I'm like, mm, I know. It's like a cat, but I hate cats because yes. I'm allergic. Sorry. 120, uh, 229 yards per 100 gram balls. They, it's a chainette where the cotton is the core, right? And the yep. wool is blown in. blown in there. The colors are so good. Yeah, they're really, they're really, really three-dimensional. Really yeah. Tonal. I gotta put these in the computer. I today. really believe the that. Computer. What? These colors aren't in the computer, like the pictures. Oh, the pictures, okay. Good yeah, time. so. Guys, in the, in the yeah. So that's been a super popular color. So everybody that sees this wants it. It's um, gorgeous. It's, you know, this selling. This color reminds me so much of your um, uh, your Moon Drake. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Electric lilac. Is yep. that what it's called? Uh, I can't remember because uh, it wasn't electric so much. It was kind of orchid. Yeah. I can't remember. Um, so. I really, I really think that the petite knit um, Sunday sweater is the perfect sweater for this. Mm -hmm. So this is Aran weight or worsted weight, and that's bulky. So just hold a um, hold a ball of mohair with it, and and it's bulky weight, and um, I think it's going to be great. Perfect. Mm -hmm. It's perfection. So, so if you're interested in making that sweater, let us know because we need one done. I have wanted that sweater for a really long time. And uh, yeah, so we just got that in. And Judy did such a good job. Oh, it's gorgeous. Nice, nicely done, Jude. And um, yeah. Gorgeous. Okay. Uh, we got in the book. Did you grab one of these? Oh, books? no, I didn't. Sorry. 52 weeks of accessories from Lina Magazine. Where is it? Oh, it's up here. It's at the front. 
Uh, so we have a huge selection of books, lots and lots and lots of books, which makes me very happy. We have The Socks, 52 Weeks of Socks, Volume 1 and 2. We have 52 Weeks of Shawls. We have 52 Weeks of Easy Knits. And now 52 Weeks of Accessories. This book is stunning. Yeah. I think that good stuff is just they do the such a great job. I mean, people are probably sick of me saying that, but I mean, they, what can I tell you? The, the books are gorgeous from uh, line of publishing. Oh God, I mean, oh, look at the hat. I love that hat. So oh. cute. Sorry. <laughs> like you could all see that. Oh, no socks. Yeah. Such a good book. They're rocking out outside. <laughs> those, oh, look oh, at those. Look at these. Oh, I love those. Those are really gorgeous. Corona. I love those. That reminds me of the people who call Corona the coronavirus, the Rona. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, man. The vid. That. The vid. Look at that. So pretty. I am, um, my shawl mojo is completely gone. Not, not. Yeah, I know what you mean. I just want to make sweaters. I want to make socks. What's that? What's that? As it's a shawl. Ah! It's called bubble gum. Well, you might be getting your shawl mojo back, or I might be. That is uh, so good. A little, be little, little, little brioche. A little brioche action. I still want to make that um, that huge cardigan from um, Grand, Shetland, Grand Shetland Adventure Nets. It will be mine. The... Uh, Balaclavas, that's the big thing. Look at these. Or as as our customers are known to say, the baklavas. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful book. 52 weeks of accessories. Ow. We got a restock <clears throat> of a Sayer, the Eco Soft, and the Eco Baby. So all of that is in the computer and online. We have five colors of the Eco Soft. Six colors? Five? We have five. They are sold out of one of the of colors. the charcoal gray. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, we've got the Eco Baby. This Eco Baby has to go over to that Eco Baby. Yes, it does. Uh, yeah. And so that's great. And last, what else? last yes. but not least, a sale. Yep. Yeah. We're going to be doing a sale. Uh, hopefully, hopefully by the time this goes up tonight will the shop online just have a sale section where everything that's on sale is in one yes. section okay great yes yeah so i need to talk to the people who do the website so it, everything will be easy to find mm -hmm. yeah i just decided to have a big sale not everything not everything in the shop but um a lot of yarn we gotta make we gotta, we gotta make, make room, room for the new i have got to take the the uh, double Sunday out of those X's. I cannot. No, I know. I can't. Yeah, that was bad. That it. was a bad decision on my part. I cannot deal. That wall is going to look so good tomorrow. I cannot wait. I can't wait either. And we now have a designated sale section in the shop. The sale stuff was kind of all over the place, but uh, now it's at the back of the shop the way I want it. Yeah. So. It's all good. It's all good things happening. Yeah. So a lot of stuff is going to be on sale. I'm going to put a I'm going to put a little bit of a tenty on sale. Um, yeah, I'm telling you, you're not going to want to miss it. You're going to be surprised at some of the stuff that's on sale. Just saying, mm. don't miss it. And of course, we'll put um, we'll put a post on Instagram and Facebook saying, go. Yeah. What else? What else? Those are the main things. Um, just looking around. Oh, we're having, keep an eye out. I'll have more details, but um, Paige Sato from Mabel, M-A-B-E-L. You know what it stands for, I can't remember. Makers, Makers. always bring extra love. I will, okay, I'm going to remember it from now on. Um, Is that your bag here? 
I don't have my bag here, shockingly. She is the designer of those gorgeous quilted bags that we have both shown. Um, she takes old quilts and makes these and recycles stunning them into bags and project bags, garments. garments, everything. Yeah. Placemats. She's Baskets. So talented. Yeah. Yeah. And they're gorgeous. She always finds the most gorgeous. Show like, where is she getting these quilts from? I don't, I don't know. Gorgeous. I don't know. But um, she is so lovely. And she's coming, I believe it's the, it's the weekend before Memorial Day. She's coming here. We need to bang out the details sh to have a trunk show and a workshop. I think it's going to be a mending workshop. Nice. Which I'm hopefully going to be able to take, I hope. I've seen a couple of really cool things lately where people have, if you have like a rip in your jeans or you can like you know weave over with the yarn I'd, yeah I well would you know love to do that Katie does those yeah Katie from Katrinkles yeah and my next order with Katie I will be getting the darning looms that she has and did they use the like I I watch a lot I anytime she posts a, I mean I watch pretty much all of Katie's videos but anytime she posts like a reel of her yeah. doing visible mending you're like yeah, seriously, it's just like it's, it's so satisfying. Of watching like someone deep clean a car. I love watching those videos. So it's so funny that you say that because I went out. This is hysterical. Well, it was to me anyway. I went out with Christina the other night, mm -hmm. and I don't know how we got on the topic, but she was talking. I was I was saying, you know how you know I I really want to change. You know, you know, organize the back room and everything. Yeah, please. So all of my dreams for the shop, yeah. my organizational dreams. And, and so we started talking about that. And so she started talking about how she watches cleaning videos, yeah, cleaning reels yeah. on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, you must watch them. I watch cleaning videos. I watch people putting away their groceries. I watch people um, deep cleaning so their that's car. that's insane. So what's really funny is Michael, like, has not ever been like a really big Instagram person. My husband, he like could care less about it. Right. But lately he's been watching reels on, on his phone and he'll, he only watches like the dumbest things like babies you mean, farting. Like cleaning videos? No, like babies farting or like oh my animals gosh, tipping over. Dumb. And he'll just like be That's sitting funny. on the couch and all of a sudden he'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what are you laughing at? He's like, I can't tell you. Cause it's like so stupid. So the other day I'm in bed and I'm like scrolling through TikTok and it's all either, it's not even knitting for me on TikTok because there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of um, we what I want to watch on TikTok for knitting. Yeah. Um, and then I'm like, swipe, oh, look at this lady. She's cleaning her kid's room. Swipe, oh, look at this other person. He's right, because then you get car. fed, swipe, you know, the oh, algorithm kicks in. this person who's reorganizing their refrigerator. I love it. So I don't you know. You watch funny dogs. I watch, I watch yes, videos. I watch animal videos mm -hmm. constantly. And, um, and, and it's really bad because I could be knitting during that I time. I have but. to, um, I have to say that the time when I was in the movie theater, not knitting because I was nauseous. Yeah. I kept thinking to myself, like, this is wasted my time. This is like wasting my knitting time because... Right. I was feeling so, I had such a headache from that. Oh, I bet. It's really. You didn't go bad. to the 3D movie, did you? No, but it didn't. It didn't matter. matter. And also, because of the way. I we, never go to those. Because of the, oh, no, I can't. Because of the way the movie theater is now with the big, big, big chairs. Seats, yeah. I feel like I should take my blanket with me. directly in the middle, you're kind of way off like oh i don't know i don't know if it was because we I haven't been to end, a movie in so long so i was sort of like looking this way kind of and all, oh god i could just thinking about it makes me want to vomit oh. you should just come to my living room it's like a movie theater mm, big tv that television is massive it's really big what you have to do is take your phone and put it in another room and then sit there and do who is it i don't know Someone in Providence. That's scam. That's scam. Scam? <laughs> That's scam. <laughs> That's scam. Auto crack. <laughs> we had some good ones today. I know. We're I really thought funny. you were saying auto crack. My toes are freezing. What do you have on? Socks and sneakers. Yeah. It's weird. Me too. My toes aren't freezing. They're not. 
my hip is killing me. My back is killing me. Um, <laughs> I gotta go to the grocery store. We are fetching my, a lot. My nephews both have strep and my brother-in-law, my sister had to go to work. So I'm gonna, I have to go to the grocery store anyway. So I'm gonna go be the auntie that delivers popsicles and oh I'm not going gosh. anywhere near them. I'm gonna knock, knock and drop it on the front steps. Yeah, no, please don't go near them because I'll kill you if you get sick oh again. Oh God, I'm so. I will kill you myself. Um, did I, so I didn't finish, but I didn't finish saying about Christina. So Christina was, Oh, what is like, she, watch she, she watches cleaning. And yeah. But it's like, like deep. I don't think she watches so much. I don't think she watches so many bodybuilding ones anymore, but there, but I went to see her in a bodybuilding show once. I bet. Um, but, um, yes, she watches a ton of people deep cleaning their kitchens and bathrooms mm -hmm. and steam cleaners yeah oh that's rotating brushes I yes bought i bought it yeah i almost bought i almost bought a rotating uh, i might buy one of those scrubbers mine has like an extender do you use the you can get up up in the in the, in the creases there's like six attachments you put them on you can get in the creases and then you're in your shower uh so good so what I wonder about with that stuff. But then you take all the handles stuff, off and then you could use it for your kitchen sink. So. Inside of your dishwasher. Mm, do you see me doing that? Do you not clean the inside of your dishwasher? I do. I throw something in there and it cleans it. I take it apart. Scrub it. Does everybody do that? Oh, it's so. Satisfying? Oh, yeah. I would be afraid of. It's really gross. Oh, oh, no, I can't. I can't. I'm sorry. Do you wash your sink? Yeah, I wash my sink. Do you use Comet? Yep. It's my favorite way to wash the sink. So, did you see my stomach? Do you ever use Barkeeper's Friend? Well, so I was going to ask you, what about this pink paste? Oh, okay. So the pink paste is just fine. Barkeeper's Friend is far better. Because I, I was stain. reading the reviews on the pink paste and people were like, eh, it's no better than anything else. No, it's not. I think it's just pink. Barkeeper's Friend is, is great. Um, it comes in a paste that. and it comes in a, in a shaky tube like Comet does. Okay. And, um, when we bought our house in our master bathroom, the lady, the behind the toilet is a radiator and she must've had a leak or something. And it was like stained, oh, yeah. rusty yeah. on the floor. Yeah. Our, our tile oh, That's white. super satisfying. I could not, that. I have tried literally everything. Literally. Literally. Barkeeper's friend and that scrub brush gone. I, I like Michael came home one day and I was like, go in the bathroom. He was like, why? I was like, go to the bathroom and look. And he was like, okay, what am I looking at? And I was like, seriously, do you not remember that nasty stain? I got it up. He was like, oh, good. Not the reaction you were hoping not the for. the reaction I was hoping for. Um, oh, here's some important news. What? So here's something I haven't talked about. <laughs> There is something I haven't talked about. Oh, we gotta talk about this. What? Shoot, we gotta talk about this. Okay. Our friend Steven from Texas. I don't have mine here, Steven, I'm sorry. Well, you brought it home. So, he made, first of all, he made this bag. And then he dyed, this. He dyed the, the strings yep. and the inside of the bags to match. Yep, and, then and he, he dyed, dyed us this yarn. Mine's Isn't it pink. beautiful? It's gorgeous. I'm going to say it's worsted weight. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. And it's a single, right? It is a single. Yep, sure is. Here's my other skein. So kind. Yeah, and then let's turn this inside out. I think he must have died. I don't know. I know he made the bag. So here's the inside of the bag. Green. Mine's pink. So thoughtful. Beyond. And wove us. He's a big weaver. That's stunning. Wove us these cloths. Aren't they beautiful? He wove this. I mean, that is like a lot of work. I love it. It's stunning. So now, and I purposely, I did purposely keep it here so we could do it on the podcast. Now I can take it home. So, Stephen, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, hope I love gifts. I hope you're still... <laughs> you are shameless. I love gifts. It's um, shocking to me when people send us things. 
That was it, shocking. Yes. Yes. It bizarre was bizarre that people watch. So <laughs> it's even more bizarre even that more people bizarre like that us that they much send us gifts. That they send us stuff. Um, but because who the heck we are we? Certainly <laughs> don't expect that. <laughs> um, so I I love this bag. I love it too. It's so cute. Yeah, I think the the people that we have met through the podcast is the best part it, about the podcast. Definitely, for sh absolutely, hundred mm -hmm. percent. So um, there was that. So. The thing I was going to say is, well, first of all, we did, we did, um, when Hope and Keisha were here, we, um, Kevin and Ray came, Kevin and Ray from Needles at the Ready came and um, spent the, spent the, spent the night, Saturday night, and we were so sad. Justine was sick the whole time. She at least got to say hi to Hope and Keisha on Sunday. Um, yeah, Charlotte's birthday was on Friday. And she woke up at four in the morning with a stomach bug, which she then shared. The worst. Which she then shared with mommy. Yeah. Um, so we spent, we were very ill on Friday. And Saturday, residual ill. Um, praying no one else would get it. And but Saturday night, I was never going to be able to come because it was my best friend Cindy's 40th right. birthday. Right. Which I didn't get to go to her birthday party either because I was just. That is so, that's really sad. Yeah, it was really sad. And they kept calling me and making me feel sadder. Not because they were being, they weren't no, being No, and that's like, the thing. We were, I had so much FOMO. <laughs> I wanted to be here. That was. I wanted to be at dinner. I wanted to be at Cindy's. I wanted to be anywhere other than the bathroom floor, which is where I was. And so that's the thing. It was like, well, we could have, I, I mean, I, I don't even think I thought about FaceTiming because it was like, that was never going to happen. Oh my God. I was and, like, death. But then. But then Kevin texted you, right? Yeah, Kevin was like, I just want you to know, we're having such a bad time. I'm leaving, I'm leaving. this place. This place is the worst. The food is terrible. These people are terrible. Because, of course, we went to the oyster bar. Made me feel And sick. then I said, and then I said this. I, I, So Ray and I were sitting next to each other. And I said to Ray, because I thought, oh, they must be so bored with this place, right? And as it turns out, apparently not. Because Ray gets the same thing every time. He doesn't even care. I know. And so I, so I said to Ray, I said, I promise next time we'll go somewhere different because there are, Rhode Island has a lot of really, really great restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's because of Johnson and Wales or, or some other reason, but a lot That's of, great. we're very lucky. We are very, very lucky. And, um, and he Ray, no, right? Ray was like, oh, well, fine. You know, like, uh, like he only wants to go to the oyster bar. In the pod, and they don't like seafood, which is hysterical. So funny. Um, on their epi on their podcast, their most recent episode where they were talking about when they came to the shop. Yeah. They were like, and Lori's like the mayor at this restaurant. It's so great. We just walk into that place. It's so great. It is kind of great. Uh, yeah, it is totally great. Um, the more you know. So... Yeah, I was, I was there the other night with Bethany and Jeremy, and it was, it was, I saw a bunch of people I knew. It was funny. Jeremy said the same thing. Um, but what was I going to say? Yeah, they both uh, were talking about how fantastic the dinner, their dinner was. Well, you know, and it then makes Kevin me. Ray said, Justine, just close your, go like this, and I'll give this you the part. thumbs up when you're able to come back and I listen. Because I had such, I felt sad. I felt well, sad, we were, sad. We were talking about you the whole night. And um, what because, is there to talk about for that much? Um, Once you say I'm awesome, that's all you have I know, to say. know, really. I guess we were going into details about your awesomeness. God, I You're wish such I a could genius. listen to those things. <laughs> Love to hear people talk about how awesome I am. Um, oh, there was something else I was going to talk about. Oh, should I talk about the fact that since we've moved into our house, I don't know if I shared this little tidbit with you. The water stinks. We have well water, which I've never had before. So it's got some kind of, apparently it's completely. You mean it smells? Yes. Oh. Yes. It smells like rotten eggs. It's awful. It is disgusting. How do you take a shower? You take a shower and apparently it's fine. It's like, it's, it's really bad when you, do I smell like rotten eggs? No. All right, good. So, how many times can I smell you in one episode? I know. <laughs> Please. Oh, that's what episode the title is. Episode 48, the 48, one where Justine smells, smells Lori. Lori. 
Oh my God. <laughs> That'll attract viewers. People will be like, what kind of show is this? <laughs> so, yeah, so it has, and you would have thought that we would have had it taken care of already, but I just, it, it, I just would forget. Like, I, I only think about it, I, I only think about it when I'm doing the dishes, which doesn't happen that often, by the way. Kevin has been doing the dishes really most of the time. I'm never home. Yeah. I'm only, I, I live at this shop. Yeah. And so when I'm home, I'm not home during the hours when you would call the, the water people, like the, the people who oh, maintain the well. and then you have to wait for them. So finally, <laughs> so I'm such an idiot. So there's a place here called, there's a place in Rhode Island called the Water Filter Company. Okay. They always advertise on radio. So I'm like, I'll just call them. So... <laughs> Kevin, so with all the work going on on the bathroom, something happened so that down in our basement, some alarm started going off. Mm -hmm. And it is the most annoying beep. And it's nonstop. Oh my God. And so, so this beeping is going off and I'm looking for it. And whatever is beeping is behind all these shelves. So I can't get back there to to like see what it is it and I'm too blind. I can't like, there's some a screen, you know, kind with red, like it's really, you know, big red message on it. And, but I can't, I can't see what the error message is. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'm like, I don't think it's like the carbon monoxide thing, you know? Yeah. And so, Needless to say, the next day I woke up, so it wasn't the carbon monoxide thing. And, oh and which is not even funny because we have uh, friends who that happened to, which I'm sure we talked about yeah. um, when we went to Rhinebeck. Yeah. And uh, so, no, I was like a little worried. And so I call Kevin, my husband and daughter were, my husband's been MIA for two weeks, um, living his best life in Colorado. and. I call him and he goes, well, take a picture of it and then you can zoom in to see the message. What did it say? Brilliant. Uh, some, something, something about, something about the water that I couldn't do anyway. Okay. And, um, but Kevin just said, Kevin goes, oh, this morning he goes, I called the company that's on the alarm. He's like, that's what I thought you were doing. <laughs> But I had called the water filter company uh, and they had given some kind of crazy estimate, you know, some thousands of dollars to like fix everything. Kevin's like, yeah, they're going to come out and do all the things and for not nearly as much money. Do you have a tankless hot water system or do you have a hot water? Do you have a, a, a large hot water heater? I think so. Ours is so, I think so. small and it's starting to like get a little dribbly dribbly at the bottom of it. And I said to Michael, uh, we're done. Oh, yeah. We need he yeah, our, don't let that go if we if i'm giving charlotte a tub and her, uh, ben's taking a shower at the same time oh. no hot water for the rest of the day it's oh, no. brutal you gotta get a new it's one brutal. yeah we need a new one yeah do that don't mm -hmm. let that go because that could be bad oh my god there's no yarn over there my yarn's all in tubs thank god is your yarn all in like plastic tubs in the cabinet in my living room. Oh, so you're good. Unless you get a leak from above. There's nothing above it. There's no roof above it? I mean, there's gotta be something. There's got a ceiling above it. The boys' bedroom. Oh, so you should be good. There's no bathroom above it or anything. Um, Guess what? Basketball's almost over. But then guess Are what? Are we done talking about water? But then guess what? After <laughs> basketball's over? Baseball. No, he didn't want to do baseball and he joined that AAU team. Oh. He tried out for a, a selected basketball for spring. Spring basketball? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome. I love basketball. I love it. Um, the only downside of this thing is that there's three locations where they try out, or not try out, where they practice a few times a week. And one of them is 25 minutes away. Mm. You Thank know, God, I'm a the, I know. 
you know, for the average person, 25 minutes actually doesn't sound like a long time. It's only because we live in Rhode Island that I that know. sounds like a long way. But where he is going is in South Kingstown, so I would drive right by URI so I can stop and get falafel. Oh, there you go. I'm looking at the bre at the glass half full. You should. Uh, you could also go to, um, what's that coffee place that's really good? Oh, TLC? Yeah. TLC Coffee Roasters? Yeah. Is that it? I think so. My hip, oh my god. Your hip? Well, my hip and my back are my all hip. connected. I gotta get that CBD cream. My butt bone is, uh... What else? Could be ready to wrap it up, guys. I think this is it. I mean, the riveting content, per usual. <laughs> As per usual. I'm trying to think. So we've got the thing with Paige coming up, which is reminding me that I need to email her back so we can... I mean, it's all... It's not really coming up. It's in May. Well, the, listen... The way that my days have been flying by. Local yarn shop day is before then. April 27th. Yeah. My birthday is before then. March 30th. Mark it in your calendar. You're going to be the big 4 -0. Oh. That's mean. You shouldn't have shared that with the whole world. You can edit it out. I'm going to be so old. You're in charge. Edit it out. <laughs> I'll make it go. <laughs> You're going to be the big <laughs> I'm sorry. You're not really mad at me, are you? No. Okay, good. Because I'm so much older than that. Michael just turned 40 and he he was like, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then all the day that he turned 40, he was like. Listen, you don't have <laughs> music. Um, you don't have a grandchild coming. That's true, I don't. So. Oh, God. Yeah, you have, a, of, you, have a, you have a four-year-old. I know. You know, mm -hmm. pretty soon I'll have a four-year-old grandchild, <laughs> uh, which I can't. I'm a little concerned about the birthday situation, your birthday situation, because it's right near when the baby's going to be due. So you're going to have to be flexible with whatever we're doing for your birthday. Okay. All right. Oh, my God, I'm going to be so old. What do you want to do? I, I have ideas. What are they? I don't know. I don't know if I'm not, I don't want to tell you. I want to surprise you, but I kind of, you know, want to know if, if there's something like you really want to do on your 40th birthday. Ugh. If there is, you should tell me. <laughs> I'm just going to keep saying 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, I am so happy. We'll see you in two weeks. Will we? Bet on it. Yes, we will, because I'm going to... Lori's going to be done with her baby blanket. I'll be... I hope so. I hope I will be. I mean, I'll have a week in Florida where there will not be much to do. hate to say it. Mm. I get to see my mom's new... Um... All right. Come on. They're crooked. It's just her eyebrows. No, I think it's my nose because rem it's even worse than before because I fell. I fell flat on my face. That is one thing that happened and almost broke my nose at Killington. So I love the fact that when I, Killington is for those who don't know, it's a, it's a mountain in Vermont. I'm, I'm sure most of the people know, but maybe people who don't live around here. And so Annie, who's from Idaho, Remember when she, were you here for that? Yeah. <laughs> she goes, I said, well, I fell at Killington. And she's, she's like, she's like, I know I'm supposed to know what that is, but I don't. <laughs> she's like, yeah, I'm just, I, yeah. I've, been, I've been acting like I know what you're talking about, but I have absolutely no clue. Yeah. Oh, God, you're so blonde. So funny. I'm so blonde. You, you're just a, you're like Barbie. Mm. Pink and all. Seriously. All right. All right. Bye. <laughs> Good to see you. Thanks for watching.